Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 101, where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net and I will do my best to answer them. Let's get right to it. First one is 12 slides and Flat Earth meetups. Hi Mark, can you send me the just Jack, 12 slides, please. I'm working on a method to try and awaken other people in my area. You see, I recently came out as a flat earther to a former coworker of mine a few months ago, and at that time, she seemed open-minded enough to hear me out with looking at me like I was insane or crazy, and instead was very accepting and understanding of the things I was telling her. That was all one sentence, by the way. I even had her researching it a little bit during our breaks, and we even started having regular conversations about it for several days after that. But unfortunately for her, she ended up losing her job a couple weeks down the line, and now I'm back at one with no one to talk about the subject once again. Anyway, ever since I started that moment with her, it seems like now all I want to do is talk Flat Earth and try to awaken or connect with others about Flat Earth. Yes, I absolutely agree. That's what happens with a lot of people. Once you're in Flat Earth, you're in it. Uh, I even tried red pilling a close friend of mine a few days ago, and he literally threatened to hang up the phone on me if I told him that I was a flat earther and then commenced to regurgitating everything he's ever been indoctrinated with about the globe model. I wish there was a meetup happening near me so I could be around people who share the same interest in flat earth movement as I do. I live in Farmville, North Carolina, and if you don't know, Farmville isn't about an hour away from Raleigh, where the convention was held last year, so that'll probably be the closest I'll ever be to a meetup. Anyway, thanks again, Mark, aka Flat Earth University Recruiter, and have a blessed day, Corey R. Uh, yeah, Corey, uh, there are tons of meetups happening all over the place. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you want to see what's happening in your area, the best uh, idea is just to type in Flat Earth Meetup and then a city or state. Uh, into YouTube. Type in Flat Earth Meetup and then whatever city or state near you. Uh, or you can go through the list. I've got a, a published list on my channel, uh, which, you know, my Flat Earth channel, which you're listening to right now. And it's the playlist is called Flat Earth Meetups, I think, 2015 to present. So you can just look through the list and see what's close to you. Also, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a little conference in North Carolina this spring. That's that's the rumor. That's what I've heard so far. I don't have any more details than that. I just know that uh, promoter is trying to do it out there, and they've already asked me to speak, and it's like great, fantastic. So hey, you'll see me out there. This one's called <clears throat> One Story from the Late Seventies. Mark, I want to tell you I'm a listener to your YouTuber channel, and you do good work. I usually go to sleep before Strange World starts, so something. Sometimes catch up with your TFR post on YouTube. Anyway, I have been wanting to tell you that when I was a kid back in the late 1970s, I was a friend at a friend's house watching something like Don Kirshner's rock concert. Don Kirshner, wow, that dates you. Or something that like that, this was pre-MTV. Yep, absolutely it was. Uh, there was a band performing with a stage light show and a laser beam from the stage projecting out over the crowd. My friend's dad said to us, those are illegal to own. And we asked if it was because the laser was dangerous like a laser gun from Star Wars. His reply was no, because well, people, people will figure out the earth is flat. His answer went over my head, not surprising there, and I didn't recall that memory until not too long after processing all the flat earth proofs and stuff back in the beginning of 2015. Also, my friend's dad was an active skydiver at the time. Anyways, good job. Keep it flat, Bill. Good story, Bill. Thank you for that. Weird story, but good. This one's called, What Time Should I Call on Tuesday for Strange World? Mark, Strange World podcast starts at 7 p.m. this Tuesday. Is there a good time to call? If you are on the line with another guest, should I keep calling? Thanks in advance. Love your work, JR. And yes, as a matter of fact, I like the Strange World that's coming up this week of Thanksgiving week or the week after Thanksgiving is going to be a subject matter expert, which he's going to be talking about paleontology and his opinion on did dinosaurs exist or not. And I'll, I'll give you the crib notes on my opinion is that do I think dinosaurs, dinosaurs existed? Yes, I do. Do I think they lived 300 million years ago? No, I do not. 
I think they were modified along with this structure in between civilizations or an old civilization. And I think the carbon dating system is completely messed up. But I think this guy's going to agree with me on it uh, because he's going to come and say, look, I've seen, he goes, I, he's going to basically come in and say he's been in a lot of different digs and he can assure you that there are, there are some things under the earth and, uh, that, that were not planted there. And, you know, my opinion is like, yeah, why not? I mean, if you, if you're a big fan of no forests on flat earth, this shouldn't be a big shock to you because I think older versions of this, like older versions of anything we make start out really, really big, like electronics and they get smaller and smaller to where now you have uh, iPods that are, you can make them actually smaller than they are even usable, which is weird. I mean, literally they, they're smaller than a matchbook right now and, and they could make them smaller. But anyway, the point is, is he's coming on this week. So if you're going to call into the show, uh, just listen and, and you'll, you'll get put in a queue. It's not like uh, you'll get, you'll just hear a busy signal or anything. It'll, it'll line up. It's professional. So it'll, it'll line up all the calls in a row and I'll, I'll answer them hopefully in the order that they are received, but I'm probably not going to take calls until the second hour. So from seven to eight Pacific, I am going to be speaking with paleontologist and from eight to nine, probably going to be taking calls. Of course, that's not a guarantee, but we'll work on it. This one's called this morning. Mark, can you please send me the link? or a video of the This Morning interview with Piers Morgan. Thank you, Adam. Yeah, and what he's talking about here, which I talked about yesterday, is that one of the few interviews that I could not put up online, obviously the Coast to Coast, because they made me literally made me sign a release form, uh, but the interview I did over in the UK via Skype on Good Morning Britain with Piers Morgan, uh, they block it. They will not let it uh, be shown in the States. You have to watch it on their site. But I've got it recorded. So if you want me to send it to you, just ask me and I'll shoot you a video copy of it. This one is called, Here, Sydney asked me to send this to you. Mark, here's some anomalies she found. Enjoy, man. That's from Josh Walker, otherwise known as Uber Flat Earth. And the link goes to, goes to what? It goes to her page with just general uploads. Josh, I think you sent me the wrong thing. I think, what, send me, well, hopefully somebody's, somebody tell Josh that you sent me just the generic page link to her, her generic, just her welcome page. Anyway, this one's called Action Required. <laughs> Sorry, I read these every once in a while. Um, unusual activity detected. During our usual security enhancement protocol, we observed multiple login attempt error while login in your on, log in to your online banking account. We have believed that someone other than you is trying to access your account for security reasons. We have temporarily suspend your account and your access to online banking and will be restricted if you fail to update. To restore, uh, restore your account, please sign into uh, online banking. Thank you for being our customer. Uh-huh, and that's from M&T Bank. Uh, it seems completely legit, and uh, I should absolutely click on this. And if you ever see any message from uh, some, a bank, take it absolutely seriously and, and click on whatever links they, they choose. And it's, of course, generic copy to undisclosed recipients, and uh, it's just terrible. So the, the, the biggest problem, and you can, you can always tell when it's being sent from out of country, is that they don't have a mastery of the English language. Uh, English, as you know, you've probably heard, if you, if you know anybody that's sp spent time with other languages, it's very easy to learn, but it's really hard to master because we bend or break a lot of our own rules. Not shocking to anyone, I'm sure. And so their, their use of grammar here was just butchered. <laughs> eh, anyway, just thought I'd point that out. Uh, I've never, honestly, un until this letter, I never even knew that M&T Bank was a thing. I never, never seen it in the states. So, is it? Can anyone tell me? Is M&T like a bank around here? It's not regional where I am, up in Seattle. This one's called Bend Oregon Meetup. Hey, Mark, it's Josh from Oregon. I'm in Zulu's After Hours Hangout that we do Tuesdays after your show. Anyways, just found out that you're coming to Bend, Oregon. Hopefully that's not wrong. One of my brother's friends told me. I'm 30 minutes from there, so I'm planning on coming to say hi, provided you're there. I got to the conference late Wednesday night, so I didn't get to see you before you left. So providing Logan Paul isn't showing up, I'm assuming you'll be there. Ha ha. Uh, quick question in the description of the meetup video says it's happening on the 26th, but then the pinned comment, you say it's... Oops. 
Sunday the tw is actually the 25th, so just wondering what it was. Uh, yeah, good point. I, that's too late to change it now because today is the 25th. Uh, anyway, hope you're good and hope you're coming to Bend. That's from Josh. And uh, no, and, and I wrote him back already, and that is uh, I make a lot of meetups, meetup promos for people all around the country and some outside of the country, but rarely do I get to go to them. I mean, if you want to fly me in to one of your meetups, great. I'd be happy to come. Uh, all you have to do is give me air, air tickets and a, uh, and a hotel, and I will happily come to your meetup, which I have done in, in various places. Uh, but Bend, Oregon, even though it's kind of driving distance, it's like five hours. Uh, no, I'm not, I'm not driving down there today. I've, I've got tons of stuff I've still got to do. Uh, but that's it. So, and, and, and if you want me to promote your meetup, all you have to do is send me your, where it's going to be, uh, the time it's time and date and the best contact info. And I got templates. I can whip up a quick promo for you. This one is called Folk Cult Pendulum. Hi, Mark. First of all, I respect your work and it made me ask a lot of questions. I really believe now that the earth is flat, uh, but only one question bothers me. I don't know how to explain the movement of the Folk Cult Pendulum. Please please, please try to make me understand. Best wishes, wishes Adrian from Romania. Uh, yeah, Adrian, just just go onto YouTube and type in Flat Earth Folk Cult Pendulum and go through it yourself. It For me, you guys heard this yesterday and probably the day before that, which is it makes no difference to me because science can't even explain explain how the folk cult pendulum works convincingly enough to the average person on the street and we can't debunk it convincingly enough because it's just hard to explain in, in either direction the easiest way to, to to throw doubt though into people's heads is okay how do you start the pendulum how does it keep going and if that is mechanical then how can it be a completely objective experiment just a thought moving on this one's called strange world 80 Mark, I'm not sure if you're tracking this or not, but Strange World 80 is being blocked. I'm trying to access it from my PC on YouTube and no bueno. I run ExpressVPN as well. I've tried several different locations. So always the same message. See the attached screenshot. Thought I would let you know. Thanks, Lashrack. And yeah, I looked into it and unfortunately it is a um, song issue because as you know, I love music and I love using songs from different artists and there are various ones that have changed their rights over the years. So I used to use Tusk from Fleetwood Mac, a song from the late 1970s, and they decided since they were going on tour again, you know, various places that they were going to block any videos that were doing that, not copyright strike, but just block them. And so I had to change it. And then the other one that changed recently was ACDC's Thunderstruck which I was always a big fan. That was from the late 1980s. And that one is now being blocked. So, now, luckily, I only used it in a few songs or a few videos. So I will go and either re-upload them soon or I will try to... Re they have a song removal tool. And as long as it doesn't blend too closely to the dialogue, it can it works pretty well. If it doesn't work for whatever reason, if anyone ever runs into that where there's something being blocked, I can I've still got the temp, the original templates from everything. I can put it back up there pretty quickly. In fact, maybe I will work on that this afternoon, since I have a little time to little time to do things. This one's called Important Fact for You. Mark, I recently watched your Flat Earth Facts. Honestly, before I watched it, I was laughing at how ridiculous the Flat Earth Theory is. I have a PhD in international law and studies study treaties like the Antarctic Treaty. I was surprised to relate to your theory uh, to the point that it's scary. One fact that you do not raise that come across my mind is the undisputed fact that the continents and the maps have been scaled to fit a globe depiction. Most, er most earthly maps have disclaimers, which confirms that they are not to size. For example, Africa is far bigger, uh, Europe and uh, South America much smaller. We all accept this because of our pragmatism for scalability. Getting to the point, I was doing a presentation at an Ivy League law school and remember that I had a slide from NASA of space at night. The pur purpose was to show development and underdevelopment through night lights. It dawned on me that this authentic picture of Earth from space at night matched the reconfigured false scale of the continents that we know is wrong. How is this possible? Shouldn't a picture of the Earth from space show the actual scale of the planets since it was taken <clears throat> excuse me, from space and not drawn? We have been told that the reason why the continents are not to scale is just to fit on the globe. So how is it supposed... How is a supposed live picture matches the false scale? Mmm, good one. When they show the entire Earth, it is to fake scale. It doesn't seem to make sense if a real if it's a real picture. Also, when they show actual continents, it's only partial, never anything to compare 
it too, like another landmark. Oh my god, I can't believe this. And that is from S-H-A-T-O-S-H-E. Shatoshi. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for that. Good insight. like it. All right. Moving on. This one's called F.E. Freebies. Mark, can you please send me all the Flat Earth freebies? Thanks, LS. Yes, absolutely. I will send you the freebies. And that includes the, um, uh, the five science questions, the 12 slides, the... Um, uh, oh wow, survival guide. Uh, and if you want, uh, if everyone wants to listen to the coast to coast interviews, just mention that you want the coast to coast interviews. I will send them through WeTransfer because they're too big to send through email. This one's called Watch Joe Rogan. Moon landing footage was faked on YouTube. Mark, seems like Joe is wavering on his former pro NASA stance. And that's from Nathan. And let me look it up real quick. And the video is called. Joan Ro Joe Rogan moon landing footage was faked. It was uh, published February of this year. It's got a million and a half views. It's got 12,000 thumbs up and two and a half thousand thumbs down. I'm sure the space community was not appreciative of what they were hearing from Joe. And and reason why that's significant, if anyone's wondering, it's like, why, why does this mean anything? And that is because Joe Rogan used to be a huge um apollo basher he would just go after nasa on a regular basis and he in fact there's a, there's a great video out there called the joe rogan mystery where it kind of goes into this where he was he was attacking you could hear his radio interviews he was going after nasa guys and, and he was beating them because all sides being equal conviction usually will win the day and then all of a sudden he he was dark for a while no one heard from him and then when he comes back he had a brand new channel on the sci-fi network called joe rogan questions everything and in the very first episode he apologized to nasa for anything bad he ever said to him it was one of the most obvious i somebody had gotten to him moments i've ever seen and then he proceeded to climb out of all rabbit holes simultaneously and didn't believe in any conspiracies at all he just he, he got his own very very popular podcast and but the sci-fi channel thing only lasted a year but he his his podcast was he could get just about any mainstream person he wanted and he he stayed away from conspiracies and only this year did he kind of start digging back into it well these days i'm gonna have to have a conversation with him but yeah it's up to him this one's called i refer to you only live twice 1967 james bond hi mark i apologize in advance if this is a silly message and perhaps i'm missing an obvious point i heard that you are the film man of the film flat earth community yes i am i have watched way too i absorb a lot of media i refer referred to you only live twice 1967 james bond nah, not my favorite series for trivia because the all the early james bonds uh, tended to blur together uh, even more more than the later ones Note that around at 9 minutes 22 seconds, the scene shows Bond's funeral at sea. The camera pans down from a straight sea horizon and set settles with a curved sea horizon. Could it be a fisheye lens of some sort, yet doesn't seem to bend anything else in the scene? Could you comment on this? I wish to remain anonymous. Very best regards and good health. Uh, yeah, I'll look into it. Uh, that's very, very interesting. So 9 minutes 22 seconds, did they actually use a fisheye lens when they were f filming the 1967 James Bond movie, You Only Live Twice. That's very possible. I mean, the fisheye lens has been around for a long, long, long time. This one's called Ridiculous Mars Oxygen Story. Hi, Mark. Keep it flat, bro. And the it's on yahoo.com. Mars, likely enough, oxygen supports life study. Hang on. I gotta, I gotta see this. So Mars likely to have enough oxygen to support life. What? The story was released October 22nd of this year uh, out of Paris. Salty water just below the surface okay, of Mars could hold enough oxygen to support the kind of mic micro microbial life that emerged and flourished in Earth billions of years ago. Uh huh. Yeah. And and again, this is what the news does. That headline, that that paragraph I read, not nearly enough, not nearly interesting enough to uh, to catch a, a viewer's attention so all you do is you take a, a picture of the the ro you know the rover or whatever this shot is of the rover and then you know what i may save that picture of the rover that's a good picture let me save this here save 
It's a good picture. I'm going to use that as one of my strange world uh, thumbnails. And then you change the title. Mars li likely enough to have oxygen to support life. And immediately, as soon as somebody reads that, they think human life. Of course. Why don't we go to Mars right now? No. And wait, who said there was salty water? Salty water uh, in some locations where we discovered that brines, water with high concentrations of salt, where where is this water exactly? <sighs> Whatever. Whatever. Love space stories. And remember, that space story is only there for one reason, to remind you that you're on a globe. That's all that drumbeat is. This one's called Panama Canal. Mark was just curious if you covered how the Panama Canal works in the FE. Been arguing with myself on how that would work. It doesn't, it doesn't work any different, and that's from Frank. It doesn't work any different than it would on a globe. The water is being circulated, we know that much, by the underwater conveyor system. In fact, the underwater conveyor system, if you put it on an AE map, works better. It works in this wonderful circular pattern. And there is going to be some flow to it, which means there is going to be some some pressure. Well, not pressure difference, flow difference. So, yes, the P Panama Canal was was never just going to be completely sitting still. It was always the motor was going to be going one way or the other. And so that's why they put in the locks. Uh, you know, that's why they had to do it the way they did it. So it doesn't again no different than in, in a globe. There you go. Remember, sea level is still sea level. This one's called the bigger question. Sorry, I should do a follow up to that. The bigger question is why, if there's a centrifugal force at the equator, why isn't there just almost no coastline there? Because the water should be bulging there. The because like a like a spare tire. Remember, water affects uh, water is affected very easily by gravity, so it should be pulled down. It's completely uniform all over the place uh, because of that magical force of gravity. So there aren't bald spots on the North Pole and South Pole, and this this heavy, heavy, thick band of water in the second in this in the center should be there, and it's not. And so why why not? Gravity, uniform gravity, because gravity is that powerful, it can absolutely counteract all centrifugal force. I don't think so. This one's called Conference in Mexico City 2019. Mark, Mark my name is Edmundo Calanchini, Mexican national and flat earther, a big fan. I would like to spread the word in Mexico. I would like to know what it would take for you to come to Mexico City for the first flat earth conference. Let me know if this is something that we can explore together and what it'll take to make that happen. Stay flat, Edmundo. And he, yeah, I wrote him, I think I wrote him back. Did I write him back? Yes, I did. And I said, if you want me to come to your conference, uh, bare minimum, you got to get me airline tickets and a uh, hotel room. Uh, the, the rest is, I'm, I'm pretty flexible on. So just give me that and I'd, I'm happy to come. I've never been to Mexico City. And uh, if you're doing a flatter thing down there, love to do it. This one's called Polaris Orbit. Mark, Polaris's orbit in our galaxy. The Polaris star as seen in our night sky positioned above the north axis, right? Our axis does not change in relation to its orbit. Therefore, the Polaris star must orbit the same ellipt elliptical orbit as the same speed, right? If Einstein is right, then there has to be an object bending the space-time equal to Polaris, m divided by Earth, multiplied by Sun. There must be a stellar object in the night sky creating the same gravitational pull on the Polaris star, right? And it gives me coordinates to the sun, Polaris, Earth, and the stellar object in question. More food for thought. The flat Earth has turned my life right side up. It hook, it, its hooks have sunk deep in my heart and mind. It is so hard to explain, but once you realize it is true, it becomes easy to understand. And that's from Eddie. Uh, yeah, you can look for the mysterious object that's, that's using the, the gravitational pull to bend time and space all you want. But if it's a projection system, it doesn't make any difference. Remember, you're, you're looking at a ceiling, lights on a ceiling. That's all you're doing. So don't don't overthink this. Don't, again, love the fact that you're you're going there and that you're you're really you know trying to to break this down. But you don't have to break it down that far. It's simple. It's easy. It's just lights in the sky. This one's called X, the Moonshot Factory. It's sent to a few people, and let me see if it's anything. We create radical. New, oh, it's an advertisement. Is it? Oh, no, no. It's a, ooh, this is interesting. 
Oh, I got to see this. Uh, we create radical new technologies. It's called X Company to solve some of the world's hardest problems. And they're talking, yeah, they're, they're, they've got satellites. We can deliver balloons. We, we, how can balloons deliver the internet to rural and unconnected places? How can drones change the way goods are delivered around the world? How can kites be used to generate electricity in unexpe unexpected places? How can beams of light support the rapidly grow growing global demand for data or data? Interesting. You know what? I'm saving this. This is some interesting stuff. I'm going to send this to uh, Globusters. Hopefully they can get it on by the, the time their show rolls around. That's really, really interesting. This one's called Please Send. Hi, Mark. Recently came across you and am intrigued. Would love if you could send me the 12 slides and the Coast to Coast episodes. Much appreciated. Till then, going through the YouTubes. <laughs> Earth is a huge mystery to me. And that's from D. D E E. Happy to help, D. This one's called Flat Earth Questions. Hi, Mark. My name is Sarah. I talked to you on the phone yesterday and you recommended a few videos for me to watch. I watched the videos and I have a few questions. If not gravity, then what? We can visually see that if you drop something, it falls to the ground. So there has to be something that is acting on it. Um, what is gravity? What does mainstream science say that gravity is? They say it's this magical magnetic force that pulls things to the ground. And if you if you aren't a hardcore density believer, and density is fine, I also think that gravity is a magical magnetic force that pulls things to the ground. Not really any different. The only difference is in a globe, it would point it to kind of a slight, slight angle to the center of the earth and... On a flat model, it just pulls it straight down. How are the seasons created? Uh, look up the Rob Skiba uh, sun trajectory wheel. That's kind of fun, where the sun um, uh, kind of moves in and out like a needle on a record player. Uh, three, what if I don't believe in God or a creator? Well, then you're going to, if you don't believe in God or creator, that's fine. Uh, but you're going to have to agree in advanced civilization that has technology that's way beyond ours. Four, if there is a creator of God and that put the round earth model in the education systems, then doesn't that mean they don't want us to know the earth is flat? Why push for the government to reveal it? Are you not worried the creators would just start over again? Yeah, there's, there's a risk there, but everything that has a beginning has an end. And our civilization has gone 5,000 years and we, we did a lot of wonderful creative things, but now we're just kind of spinning our wheels, grinding metal. We're not creating anything new. We haven't for some time. Uh, anyone has any, any doubts about that? Look up again, the, the greatest year in movies where uh, American cinema peaked out in 1999. That was 20 years ago and television a few years after that. And now we're just, we, there is nothing new under the sun for us. So we got, I'm not saying they have to destroy the world and the world will still be fine. Civilization does have to move on and do other things. You know, the graduating class has to graduate. Seniors can't stay seniors forever. Eventually you got to leave. You don't have to go home, but you got to get the hell out of here. Uh, anyway, she ends, she ends this. Uh, thanks for your help, Sarah. You know what? I will write her and say I addressed this on my show. This one's called Great Clue Video, Sir. <laughs> I didn't say Mark. He just says, Sir, with utmost respect, I am still searching for concrete proof that our reality is flat earth. I am 45 years old, came to this last year reading military history. Richard Byrd, I am a private pilot, love history now. I was floored and pissed nobody taught me this and believe it or not, I wasn't seeing anything online prior to my awakening. Anyway, because of my indoctrination, I am only 70 to 95% flat earther on a given day, but I always seek absolute truth with like seven exclamation points. My simple question, I have a seven-year-old daughter in the public school system in which I'm trying to teach her to observe reality, ask questions until she understands. Again, my question is, do you have tests, experiments, anything to continue to show my daughter about flat earth and then plant the seeds to my coworkers? Coworkers that have cabins on the lake. I have them testing with lasers, view, binoculars, etc. I live in Minnesota. I have alienated many folks. Some come back to talk. Anyway, I have only been reading tons since May or June of 2017 after Bird's expeditions to the South Pole. I couldn't believe it. Every time I tried to prove it was a globe, I found flat. But I want simple tests, ideas to mold my daughter into questioning reality. I am creating the sundial as well and marking sunrise, sunset on fence each night. Thanks much, David Scora. 
And so he wants simple tests. You know what? I'm going to send him the five questions, the five science questions that I wrote or that I sent the guy from um, Georgetown University. I'll send that off to him. And if you guys want the five questions that, that I sent to the George, you know, there was a German television team from um, uh, ZDF. That's the German television network. And they got a hold of a Georgetown University and we were supposed to do this debate. And I sent my five questions and the guy just folded like a card table. So if anyone wants those five questions, all you have to do is ask and say, I want the five questions. And I will shoot them off to you. They're also in, in the speech. You can listen to them. Um, just type in um, Mark Canadian speech 2018 that I did up in um, Edmonton. And you can you can listen to that as well. This one's called, this Subaru is flat. And it's from Jim. Hi, Mark, traded the black beauty for this. Uh, uh, 2007 Forester, same motor, turbo, but an automatic, my first. Hope you can use it. It's really nice, great show tank. Have you checked out checked Q out yet? I know the earth is flat, but this is good versus evil. The next step after F. Uh, after F.E. Truth. Regards, Jim. I love the picture. Thank you, and I will try to use it if I can. The uh, As far as Q is concerned, I, sorry, it's not bigger than Flat Earth, in my opinion. Yeah, Flat Earth opens your mind to a lot of things, and if you want to go down the Q, a non thing, fine. Great, wonderful, but Flat Earth is still bigger because it is still is the whole world. In fact, to find me something that honestly, objectively is bigger than Flat Earth, there's only one thing I can think of, which is the meaning of life itself. And that is uh, discovering God. Well, God actually makes an appearance, shows up not in a big fluffy white bathrobe. I highly doubt that. Why is it always a bathrobe for him? Honestly, he looks like a Santa Claus on a Sunday morning. Yeah, it's probably us, probably Americans that came up with that. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth. Hello, Mark. I want to thank and commend you on your tremendous Flat Earth work you have done. I was wondering how the spinning globe worked and found out in about a day and a half that it's flat and doesn't move at all. What really bugs me, however, is a, is the way, not surprisingly, that Christians are jumping on the bandwagon. You see, creation is the only part of Christianity that is actually true. The rest of it is as big as lies. The globe is. Don't get me wrong. I'm a Bible believer, but Christianity has bastardized the truth of the Bible, Romans 1.25, to the point of pure fiction. This is very easy to prove through the scriptures, but I can't seem to find any Christians that really want to know the entire truth. Oh, here we go, which is, of course, the Torah. As is revealed in the entirety of the Bible, I could educate much further, but I'll keep it short. Thanks. Keep up the good work. Shalom, Royce. And yeah, again, I flat earth encompasses all religions. You know, I, I, I acknowledge the big five, which are um, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, and Christianity. Um, this is, can, this is the, the is one of the oldest arguments in our civilization, which is, which is the one true religion, religion. And, um, look, I know everyone's got their favorites, but you better keep an, an open mind to the others. Just saying, cause you may all have a piece to the same puzzle may have to kind of collaborate before it's over. It's possible. Just saying, don't, don't discount it. Because there, you know, all these other, uh, whatever religion you're in, there are four others that are as big, uh, some even bigger, some wealthier, and they are all as dedicated as you. So, you know, don't, don't sell their enthusiasm short. Anyway, moving on. It's Sunday. I can get away with that. This one's called Hey. <laughs> it's literally, that's the title, Hey, and then Hey Mark. And that's it. And there's, there's a colon next to it. Like he wanted to type something. And that's from Tom. You know what? I'm going to give your full name, Tom, since you Tom Kolkebeck, K-O-L-K-E-B-E-C-K. -E -E Thanks, Tom. It's inspiring. And this one's called Mark. Mark, are meteorites real? Uh, Yeah, sure. Why wouldn't they be? Uh, Jonathan from Jersey was the first person to throw that at me, which is like, yeah, it's like just like throwing rocks in an aquarium. And that the analogy is actually pretty close, which is all you have to do is introduce a piece of metal ore at speed uh, you know, through some railgun technology and let the, let the atmosphere, you know, which is N4O for those science geeks out there, and which is four parts nitrogen, one part oxygen. And let the friction just burn that thing up and try not to aim it at any major cities. Which is weird because you'd think with all those meteorites flying around out there that some landmass would have gotten smacked. Or we would have seen a, a great picture of a meteorite landing in the water by now. 
and causing you know some some tidal waves. I'm not talking like Deep Impact or Armageddon or something like that, but we don't ever see that, which is unusual. We've all heard of meteorites. We know about comets and shooting stars and all that, but uh, we don't we don't see them. Kind of weird, huh? This one's called IPS and Mad Mike. Hey, Mark, we may not see eye to eye on everything, but I'm hoping we can work together to rid the community of Mad Mike and IPS. <laughs> I've had a few ideas if you want to discuss further. P.S. This will be a private collaboration of sorts, not public regards. MG. Oh, right. I didn't even didn't even occur to me. It's MG TV channel, one of our one of the dedicated um, flat earth troll channels. And uh, you know what? I, I, I generally I don't read troll emails. Uh, but I, I got to give this this guy a little particular credit because he actually attacked Logan Paul. You know it's bad when your own trolls are attacking Logan Paul. And I know you're saying, oh God, not Logan Paul again. No, 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 it's, only, it's not been that long. And uh, one other thing I'm going to mention, which you hadn't seen the story yet, because uh, also on the Daily Beast, which was even the Flat Earth Society, the formal Flat Earth Society, which we can we can rarely ever get them to come out of their cave and say hi, even they called up the media and said, yeah, Logan Paul, we are not, we do not want to be associated with him in any way, shape or form. That's a bad sign. When, when the Flatter Society, who never helps with anything that we do, I seriously, I don't know anyone in the Flatter Society when they, when they're actually making noise along those lines, kind of a red flag, just saying. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I should answer that. No, I'm not going to help get rid of Mad Mike and IPS. Um, uh, IPS is, has made mistakes, definitely, and I don't know why he insists on attacking the community on a regular basis. Um, Mad Mike, do I hate Mad Mike? No, I don't hate Mad Mike. You know, he, what's that line from Daniel Tosh? Uh, uh, smart enough to, to build his own rocket, and dumb enough to get inside it, uh, even though I offered to, to be the backup pilot for this thing. I, do I think he's, he's coattailing us a bit? Yeah, yeah, I do. I, why, why wouldn't you? Other people, it's the same thing again with Logan Paul. Logan Paul is using the Flatters community to try to uh, make a comeback in his career because he was put on blacklist. In fact, the mainstream media really did not cover him because he's on a blacklist, like other celebrities that are out there. Uh, that, that do controversial things. And so Mad Mike, he's doing this just to, you know, he's using Flat Earth is white hot and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And so there, are, you will see more people like this that will come along. Can, uh, can Mike talk a little bit of the talk? Yes, of course. Uh, will he ever build the second rocket? No, it's the second rocket he's talking about is, is far, far more advanced and would take l way more than $2 million and would take years and a, a huge amount of engineers. And I mean, it'd be basically have to create his own little space program to pull off the second rocket if you ever look at the logistics of it. Anyway, enough of that. Let's move on. Oh, look, the guy, the cool Quebec wrote back. Because um, I wrote back and I said, I said, hey, I, I wrote him back and said, hey, he goes, Mark, how do ball earthers know when solar and lunar eclipses are going to happen? Tom, uh, they, it's just time based. It's they you, you watch the sky. The sky is consistent. No different. But the question is, is the earth moving or is the sky moving? The sky is moving. The earth isn't moving, so we've tracked stuff for a long time. It's how the zodiac was formed. You can, you know, you can, you can watch the same constellations go over the sky and then they slightly change and it's a, it's a variable projection system. That's all it is. And we've known exactly how the stars can be tracked for a long, long time. It's an old, something we've known a long, long time. Anyway, this one's called Wonder What He Knew. Mark, check out this link. Okay, it's for the mirror.co.uk, and it's, what's the link? Antarctic researcher who snapped and stabbed colleague in frenzy was driven mad living in confined space. And uh, it looks like it's a Russian group. So engineer Sergei Savitsky, 55, is accused of stabbing welder Oleg Belogzugov, 52, in the chest while he was at the station on King George Island in the Antarctic. Hmm. All right. Well, I, I, 
hard to say why that story is out there. Don't know. I mean, it happened down in the Antarctic. There are a few people down there. Not much. Anyway, it was sent by Andrew. Thank you, Andrew, for that. This one's called, May I Answer Your Question? Dear Mark Sargent, in your comment on the YouTube video Flat Earth Debate, you asked the question, can you prove the Earth is a globe without NASA? I think I can, but I'm not sure if you're interested in how and why. If you are, please contact me and I will gladly explain why I can prove the Earth is a globe without involving NASA. Best regards, Ole de Hessler. And no, no, no cliffhangers. Even from In fact, cliffhangers from trolls are even worse. So basically he's saying, oh, I can totally prove the Earth, but you're going to have to write me back to let me know how, how the, uh, the Earth is a globe without using NASA. Uh -huh. It's 99% chance he's going to use geometry. To, to try to do it. That's it. That's all you can do on the ground if is use geometry. Nope. This one's called This Goes or I Go. Hi, Mark. I am writing to you to express my utter disappointment in being told to clear my workspace because some members of my office floor find this offensive and insults their intelligence. I'm frequently asked, frequently asked questions with some open-minded people, uh, though some passerbys just smirk and walk away. I do work in a scientific research laboratory, so it does go against all their beliefs. Anyhow, love your shows, Mark. Keep it up and stay flat. George from Melbourne, Australia. And yes, he's got a standard cube in Australia and pretty much he has plastered. I use this for one of my thumbnails and he has, he has printed out in color so many, uh, so many memes, flat earth memes. He's covered them around his desk and people have gotten really tired of him doing that. So they're asking him to take them down. But before that, and, and so now he's, he's, I've got this pick. And it will live forever. I've got it in my slideshow, and I've got it in my thumbnails. And good for you, man, George. Glad, glad you're doing that. That's awesome. This one's called Your Videos. Hi, Mark. Love all your, your work you do on Flat Earth. May I publish your work on my channel? Uh, it's only a very small channel. If not, no worries. Thanks for all you do. Bless you, Daryl. And yeah, anyone that wants to, my stuff is your stuff. Whatever is on my channel, feel free to, to grab it and uh, put it on your channel and do whatever you want with it. That's how, honestly, that's how the Flat Earth Clues got as popular as they did. Because I made a Creative Commons license. In fact, my default setting for any of my videos, unless they have copyrighted music, is Creative Commons. Which you, means you can take them and put it on your channel and get the nickels for it. And there were a number of people that have put, that mashed up the clues into one big movie and put them out on their channels and they have millions of hits. I, I don't even know how many millions are out there. There's a lot, uh, way more than my entire channel that, that are out there. They just retitled it, whatever they want. So feel free. You can take them, put them on your channel, rename them, never tell me because that's what people were doing in the beginning. I didn't think they were going to get that much traction, but they did. This one's called NASA Magic. Hey, Mark, have you seen this? It's a tweet from the Science Nature page, or it's a Instagram post. NASA emailed a wrench to space. An astronaut working on the International Space Station needed a tool he didn't have. So NASA designed one with the computer software and emailed the file to him. He then used a 3D printer to create the first object ever designed on Earth and made in space. <sighs> yeah, that was October 23rd. Uh, that's awesome. Thank you for that. Yeah, because that's also a high priority. You you'd want a three D printer up there to to make tools that you didn't have, because why didn't have the tool exactly for what they needed? Propaganda. This one's called Flat Earth Model. Hello, Mark Sargent. My name is Paul Maholland. I'm an admirer of your work on YouTube. I was curious if you knew where or how I could acquire an accurate and to scale model of the flat earth so I can see what it looks like precisely. Also, what software do you use to edit and create your videos? And that's from Paul. Okay, uh, first off, you want any models, and I, I think he's still selling them, is Chris Pontius. You look him up on YouTube or you can go to flatearthmodels.com. They are not cheap, but they are very, very cool models. And are, I don't know if they're completely to scale, but they're pretty close. I think they're the closest physical models we have out there. And the software that I use to edit and create my videos, it's extremely high end, top shelf. No, it is not. It is free. 
in fact, they don't even support it anymore. It's Windows Live Movie Maker, which uh, I think was abandoned finally by Microsoft this year. It's like, well, we're not supporting it anymore. But it's easy. It's it's super easy to use, and I don't need anything complex to use. I don't need Studio or other stuff to, to make it. And there's a lot. There's so many great video editors out there, but with mine, it's just a free program that you get with. I think it's you can download it with Windows Live Essentials. And they don't, that package isn't supported anymore, but I have it on this machine right now running Windows 10, and um, it's cool. I, I, I still have fun with it. This one is called Chinese City to launch an artificial satellite that will be visible all over the world at the same time. We must be living on a flat plane. And the article is, yeah, from fortune.com. Yeah, it's the artificial moon China. Yeah, that China is going to try to launch a satellite that's going to be brighter than the actual moon. And that was sent to me by my friend up in Canada, Brian, and his brother, Ron. Very, very cool. This one's called Flat Earth. Hello, Mark. Just watched your YouTube video. Very interesting. What do you think is at the end and why hide it? Why, why hide the world? It's part of the mystery. It's part of the reason we're here. Uh, we're sealed in. And we are not allowed, we're in a re very conflicted, restrictive world. And we're, it's school. That's what it feels like, more than anything. More than an entertainment system, more than, remember, because it can only be three things. Uh, one of three things, or a combination of three things. Uh, which is either an entertainment system, a confinement system, or an education system. And entertainment system, uh, can't be that, because not that many people are having fun. A confinement system, eh. If you want to be make it prison, it's still pretty nice for prison, if that's what it is. I mean, some people, oh no, it's a prison planet. It's like, yeah, it's no. There's some there's some cultures out there that are are quite content, which is not what you want in a prison. You want to remind people on a daily basis, you're in prison, you're being punished. And as far as an education system, that's what it kind of feels like because you know, school is kind of confinement, a little bit of entertainment, but most of the time you're, you're learning something. And that's what it feels. Yeah, there's some people that don't learn much, but I think we, a lot of people here do learn something every day. So there you go. That's And why hide it? Uh, yeah, because that, again, it's part of the universe process. That's why you hide it. Sorry, just the way. I, I, I don't want to expand on it. We're too late into this. And that's a whole nother, that's hours. Like, trying to explain all that. This one's called Flat Earth Distances. Mark, I find the argument for Flat Earth very compelling from the moon landing to the off-limits of Antarctica and many more things in between. I'm starting to become a believer in the Flat Earth. When you look at a globe model of the island of Antarctica compared to the Flat Earth map with the Ring of Ice, you see that there is a very large difference in the linear di distances. When you look at the distances of places in the Southern Hemisphere and compare it to the globe and the Flat Earth map, it seems that the Flat Earth map shows greater distances between places. I wonder if we can look up voyages of ships that have been documented prior to 1958 to determine what distances and time required to go to these places. That's from Glenn. Yeah, maybe. He's out in Canada. I uh, don't know. I, yeah, I'm sure there's some videos been made on this recently. I and mean, there's so many, there's so much content out there. Uh, actual ship voyage distances, a little tricky. Uh, because determining distances, if you're not doing it by the sun and the stars, uh, I don't know, maybe. Maybe. You might, have, might be able to do, it's going to be tough to test. Let, let's be brutal here. This one's called Your YouTube Videos. Hi, Mark. I've been watching some of your videos regarding space and the flat Earth. Very interesting stuff. I do think the moon landing is fake, but the flat Earth theory, I'm not yet on board with that. I have one looming question that I haven't yet answered. How do you explain the sun, <laughs> sunrise, sunset, day and night? I'm asking from a standpoint of hoping uh, for a logical answer to support the flat Earth theory. Thanks, Brian. And... Yeah, go to, your best bet is go to DITRH channel and look up the sun and the moon or just type in flat earth sun, uh, sun and watch it yourself. There's some very, very interesting things that are happening out there. That's why I would look first. DITRH or just type in flat earth sun, sunrise, sunset, seasons, plenty of stuff out there. This one's called, oops, I may have said too much. Hi, Mark. The other day I was having a monthly lunch with a 
a very dear friend I have known since my youth. Our lunches are usually very long because we totally enjoy our conversations, which go far and wide and deep. We often end up continuing our fascinating dialogue during a walk or sitting on a park, uh, sitting in a park. But this time, early on, I shared my new, new discovery of your Flat Earth Clues, a topic that I have heard for years and have previously mocked. She became extremely distraught and even traumatized as I spoke and quietly ended our meeting way too early. I did not object as I could see her need to process, so I hugged her and let her go. It was like watching someone whose entire world was crumbling before their eyes. Now I understand the Fight Club rule. Yep. First rule of Flat Club is you do not talk about Flat Club. You size up who you are talking to. Because remember, you could lose friends and family and coworkers very easily. So if you're ready for that, yeah, you can break the rule. I don't recommend it, though. This one's called Flat Earth, Flat Earth Organization. Hi, Mark. Thanks for your great work of truth for the 8 billion deceived children of Earth. Are we up to 8 billion? I think it's only 7. Do you also think it would be wise to move awakened flat earthers into local communities? <laughs> what? Or you mean like camps? Huh? I opened today uh, the Flat Earth Switzerland community, and I think because many flat earthers feel alone because nobody takes them serious, it would make sense to let them join local communities. The truth shall be our foundation of friendship, so our friendship never fails. Thanks for your response, and if you like my proposition, advertise it on one of your videos. And his Facebook thing is called Love Truth 1035, and that's from Timothy. Thanks, Timothy. This one's called Question About Flat Earth. Mark, I've recently watched a few of your videos, and though some of what you said made a lot of sense, two things are still bothering me and make, a, make me a bit skeptical. The first is your discussion of flight times between countries and the Southern Hemisphere, and the second is your discussion on the AE map projection. First, I want to start with when you said that the flight paths in the Southern Hemisphere don't make sense. I did some of my own research, and there's actually our flights between, here we go, Brazil and South Africa and between Chile and New Zealand. Furthermore, the flight times between these places seem to make more sense with a spherical model than a flat model. Uh, looking at the AE and flat earth maps, it looks like Brazil is much, much further south in South Africa than the eastern U.S. is from Europe. And it looks like Chile is much, much farther away than New Zealand than the western U.S. is from South Korea. But if you compare the flight times, the ones in the northern hemisphere are actually longer in the flight time. The distances, assuming a spherical earth and fairly similar note, I've included flight times at the bottom. It seems like the flight times support the notion that these distances are similar as a spherical Earth. Wow, is he going to keep going in this circle? Uh, and that brings me to the late, to the idea of the AE projection. From what I understand, all the different map projections looking through, uh, looking different are based on the notion that the Earth is spherical. The problem is a sphere can't be perfectly represented on a flat surface, which is why there are so many different projections. Anyway, in the AE projection, I don't think the image means to suggest it continues in the southern hemisphere actually are further apart just that they have to be drawn that way in order to fit on a flat, or flat surface. If you look at the two dotted circles, for example, the tropics of Capricorn and Cancer, they are different sizes in the AE projection, even though on a sphere they are the same distance around. I suppose it could be that they actually are the same distance. <laughs> oh, this is so in his head. He's not getting rid of this anytime soon. In the Southern Hemisphere really are longer, but the flight times in the Northern Southern Hemispheres make me question that. So this is the main thing that makes me question the flat Earth theory. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks, Jack. Problem is, Jack, and I talked about, which is why I made Clue 9, is that it's not it's not the distances and the times, it's the routes that are the problem. Because the flight, the latitude and longitude coordinates completely drop off. They Once they get outside of a land radar range, the planes aren't tracked anymore, not officially. And remember, it's a global positioning system, which means blanket coverage. What, 32 satellites overlapping blanket coverage? There should be no dead spots. And we see dead spots all over the place in the Southern Hemisphere, otherwise known as the Outer Ring. In fact, we, we see dead spots in the Northern Hemisphere. If you're flying from San Francisco to Hawaii, your route will drop off once you get off of California a ways. Because remember, there's no islands between California and Hawaii. So how does that happen? How, how is that even possible with a, um, with a global positioning system? How? Doesn't, don't, don't see it, which is why I made Clue 9. Look at Clue 9 again. I, again, I know it's three years ago, but still. 
This one's called, have you considered that the earth is not flat, but rather simply a sphere that is much, much larger than what we've been told? Yes, I have. That is one of the first things people have mentioned. But even then, that means that the globe we're told is a, is a huge lie. It also means that you're hanging on to the globe too tight. Uh, you're just hanging on to a bigger globe. What, what if it's bigger? It can still be a globe, right? No, no, it doesn't have to be. Uh, Mark Lowe, I've been exploring flat earth ideas for months now and have become fascinated with the subject. I recently ran across... A few of your videos and just today came across your series of videos. They are a very interesting compendium of ideas, insights, speculation, as well as facts concerning flat earth. And the picture of the Apollo 11 astronauts in a press conference appears to be very revealing as to their demeanor, which is indeed curious for people who have just landed on the moon. I've been exploring the idea that the moon landings were fake also. I am simply stunned by both concepts, and so I continue to look further into both subjects. My question to you is, uh, have you considered that the Earth is not flat, but rather simply a sphere that is much larger than what we've been told? Suppose planet Earth, the entire Earth, is actually a million times larger. Well, if... It, yeah, okay. Then the 25,000 mile circumference we've been taught and that the Earth we are aware of is simply a small, closed off small portion of this total size. Yeah, of course. Of course. Uh, if true, this would still allow astrophysicists to explore other planets and solar systems visually, at least. No, nah, not, not the same way, though. Uh, if the waters above the firmament were clear to see through, uh, there is one private launched rocket test with a GoPro attached where the rocket spun rapidly. Yeah, I know. It's a 70 mile rocket. Uh, reached 70 miles, or it seemed to be immersed in a liquid that slowed its spinning to a crawl. I cannot be sure this is not a hoax, though. Regardless, the point of it is the curvature tests reveal no curvature, as many claim. Uh, it need not mean the Earth is flat, but merely rather very large. Yeah, I know you said that. In fact, you're being redundant now. Unexpectedly large, such that researchers such as yourself conclude the Earth is flat. This large Earth concept also needs not r negate the concept that our sun and the moon are artificial orbs floating just a few thousand miles away within the firmament enclosed as flatter theory claims as opposed to uh, what do you think thanks Stephen. yeah yeah of course it could be possible but whether you're on a, a sphere that's a million times larger or you're just on a flat plane with a dome on it uh, there's not really that much difference except here's here's the big problem you're talking about space that's your big problem that that is gravity versus the atmosphere uh, so the atmosphere, if, if it's not, if it's not a dome structure, if it's not a pressurized dome structure, and remember pressure needs a container, then you still run into the same problem. Sort of like the people that believe in the infinite plane without the dome. And that is what's holding the atmosphere down. What's, what's holding it down here. Uh, if you say gravity, well, you get a problem because then you've, you're talking about, um, a small amount of gravity versus the almost limitless power of or pressure difference with the uh, vacuum of space again i use the basketball analogy which is you know what we'll end on this one i use the basketball analogy you can you can do this to anybody hold a basketball in your hand and say okay what makes the basketball a basketball um the pressure difference why is a basketball tight why can't you fold a basketball in in half that's well it's because there's more atmosphere inside it i go yes um pressure needs a container without that container you got nothing uh, so a can of hairspray, a can of paint, uh, pressure inside it, it, it's, it, it pushes against the structure, but it's a hard structure. It only, it only creates stress. If it's a soft container, like a basketball, it expands it until it becomes tight, and then it eventually explodes if you put enough pressure inside it. So that being the case, how does the earth work? Because the earth doesn't have a container around it. You're talking about a basketball with a wisp of smoke covering the top of it, and yet there's a vacuum of space around it and you're saying the that basketball is going to win i don't care if it's a dense basketball or not you're saying that the the, the vacuum of space is not going to rip off that atmosphere no nah, sorry not buying it anyway that's it guys we're gonna wrap this one up and i am making headway i swear i'm i it'll take me a little bit longer but i will finish this getting through all the emails and i'm sorry for the delays you can email me at msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Until next time, guys, stay flat.